It's time for Around the Ozarks in 5, brought to you by the Butterfly Palace. Have the best day ever adventuring through the rainforest at the Butterfly Palace. And Springfield Green County Park Board, reminding you to go play. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Foreheads. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. So good to see you again. Uh, thanks for being with us, whether you're listening on the, this the podcast, the audio version, or if you're on Facebook or our YouTube page and watching, watching the video. We appreciate it. Uh, so we'll begin with news. All right, here we go. Missouri's attorney general is one of seven total that are after Target, the retailer. The AG say Target's Pride Month campaign violated child protection laws by promoting potentially harmful products to minors and related potential interference with parental authority in matters of sex and gender identity. Uh, No word yet on Target's response. Okay. After stricter emission rules from the Environmental Protection Agencies with the Clean Air Act, a local business owner was in legal trouble for violating the act with his tow trucks. Now, affordable towing owner Dennis Cleveland violated conditions of his release. Cleveland pleaded guilty back in March to violating the Clean Air Act. At a bond hearing today, a federal prosecutor said that Cleveland is still using his altered tow trucks, so he will be sentenced at a later date. All right. Uh, Not too much longer, and the Grant Avenue Parkway project will wrap up. It's expected to be finished in 2024. So it doesn't seem like it's that far away unless you, of course, live on Grant Avenue, Um, at which point you're like, this has been 14 months, and it's still going on. Um, Right now, crews are on phases three and four of seven total. Uh, People who frequent there and live there say they are more than ready to be finished because still in some parts the road is torn up. Um, and it's slow going city leaders say the thing slowing down progress is in some of the yards along the street. They need to buy small portions of that property in order to expand. So those negotiations can sometimes take longer than expected. Well, I'm excited about what it's going to be whenever it's finished, but I drove through there the other day and it ain't finished yet. I can tell you that it's a mess. It Interestingly, I drove through there yesterday. I had not been on that street in a while, and yeah. I drove it yesterday and thought the same thing. So, yep. We used uh, to take the bridal uh, closing down in Springfield. Uh, the wedding dress store already has people holding signs outside on uh, its store there on South Glenstone announcing their big sales going on. No word yet on their exact last day, but it's going to be soon and very soon. So, if you're in need of a wedding dress or bridesmaids dress or whatever else they sell these days now's the time did you know have you seen i'm not in need of one of those but thank you oh all right i thought i thought you might already you know have done your shopping uh keep an eye out on pbs tv stations evangel university is going to be featured that's exciting it'll be featured on the show viewpoint hosted by dennis quaid as he highlights excellence and innovation in education uh, no word yet on when it's going to air here, but it will be put into a rotation that it could be played year round. Yeah. Well, you think that the, the local PBS put it in a fairly heavy rotation uh, since it's from uh, from right here highlighting one of our own. So we'll see. I do want to see it, though, and see what they focus on. Another big honor for another local attraction. Table Rock Lake recently v- voted the best lake in the United States by TravelersWorldwide.com, which commented on the lake's 800 miles of shoreline, world-class fishing, boating, swimming, and family atmosphere, as we all know. Also, Table Rock uh, ranked 25th most beautiful body of water in the United States by another website, Sixt, S-I-X-T.com, which honored Table Rock for its crystal clear water and Instagrammable Hidden beaches. That's a thing now. Instagrammable things. I was about to say, uh, did you, is that a verb? Is that a, uh, apparently it is. Is it a noun? Uh, so now silver, <laughs> silver dollar city, wonders of wildlife and table rock are all ranking number one in their fields. And they're all right here in our backyard. Good for us. Right? Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, clearly people miss traveling during COVID. Uh, we are back at it in record numbers now. Over at the Springfield Airport, it's on pace to destroy the old record for travelers set in 2029, or 20, 2019, <laughs> too many twos. Uh, just about all the crucial numbers are up and show no signs of dropping through the end of the year. And I was just, I had a flight out uh, uh, three weeks or so ago, 
And I was just in the, the local lot, but I was, as I drove through, even the long-term lot was, was out farther than I've ever seen the cars. It was crazy how many cars were there. And it wasn't like a holiday weekend or anything when, when people typically travel, but yeah. I was, I was amazed at how many cars were there and how many people were traveling. So. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, now that you mention it, I think I've parked in that really far back parking lot every time I've been in the last year, probably to the airport. Yeah, it's weird. It's a lot. You got to now. I have to really remember where I parked. It's a hike. <laughs> I know. Hike. Um, you don't have a system to remember. See, I have a system to remember. What's I'm not going to tell you my system because I feel like that. I don't want to like identify my system or my vehicle, but. I have a system. Okay. Well, I do. I have a system as well. So I always find my car, but I just want to make sure I don't do any extra walking. Um, not to put you on the spot, sir, but do you always find your car? I do. Is that <laughs> do you right? Have, you have an example of me not? One time uh, that happened. <laughs> on our first date? One time. On our first date, you didn't find your car. Remember? <laughs> One time it's happened, and I, I never hear the end of it for now. So, uh, what, fifteen years? Sixteen years, and 16 it happens. Years? It happens to have been our first date, which that's the funny <laughs> part is that it was our first date. If you did it today, I wouldn't make fun of you, but you did it on our first date. He literally lost his Jeep um, that he picked me up in his chariot, um, his nineteen ninety Jeep Wrangler chariot, uh, in the MSU Bears parking lot. I did. You know what happened? I think I figured it out since then. It's summer, <laughs> summer down and summer up. And if you go on the same floor on this side, you can't see this side. And I think I was on, we were over on this side and we're supposed to be on this side. So I think that, I think that's how the problem, and you had me all flustered. It was our first date. I know I was so cute. I had on high heels or it wouldn't have been a problem. I had on super high heels cause I was trying to look cute. And then we lost the daggum Jeep. So I'm like <laughs> four miles later in my heels um, only for a while. We only lost it for a while. Eventually we found it and, uh, and look at us now. And it doesn't We're, even lock. So you can't like click the clicker and no, like listen for it. No. I <laughs> still have you mean? and I still have the Jeep. It's pretty true. good. I think that's, that's pretty good. All right. Now this $400,000 worth of grant money coming to help local charities that help the homeless. U S department of housing and urban development will divvy that money out as part of the American rescue plan. That's Yes, more COVID money. Yes, more COVID money. It's still still being funneled out. Organizations that help the homeless in any way, such as housing, food, child care, whatever it is, uh, can be considered for that money. So maybe there's a local organization that hasn't heard of this yet. Um, there's a meeting this Thursday, the 13th, 1 in the p.m. at the Bush Municipal Building in Springfield to find out more about that. Yes. Must go to that meeting if you are interested in applying for that money. Um, all right. If you have a little one that loves big trucks, tonight is your night at the Battlefield Mall from 530 till 830 tonight. It is the big rig night. Fire trucks, ambulances, semi trucks, uh, even some race cars apparently going to be on hand tonight for you to get up close and personal. Uh, you can try it all the bells and whistles. There are also games, crafts and food from local vendors. Should be a good time. It's always um, a hot time out there on that asphalt. I know that. I've been out there the last couple of years, and it'll be no different tonight. 93 degrees or so today with uh, maybe an isolated shower, but a very small chance of that. It's going to get hot tomorrow, uh, 98, and then 95 on Thursday. Uh, if you'd like a more thorough and uh, professional weathercast, <laughs> don't forget that Abby is with us now in, in the podcast family. You can, uh, you can tune into Around the Ozarks, Wake up weather with meteorologist. That's the key. Meteorologist Abby Dyer. Uh, every morning, wherever you find our podcast, you can find hers as well. She'll do some trivia for you, tell you what you need to know for the day or for the week, and you can be set whenever you leave the house. Yeah, and if you subscribe to our podcast, by the way, around the Ozarks in five, you'll automatically be subscribed to hers um, for the weather. So it's cool because one subscription will get you both of those uh, yeah. into your inbox or wherever you prefer it on your podcast platform. So, and yeah. you know, we're also on. Uh, we don't talk about this much, but we're on YouTube. And somebody was telling me recently that they they turn they they send YouTube to their TV, so they get to watch this on their their big screen TV. Not that. I would advise that, but if that's what you wanted to do, you certainly could. Uh, Not that it's anything probably, fancy to see. Yeah, well, you However, could probably read the uh, read the 
uh, signatures on my shirts back, my jerseys back there. Yeah, no doubt. If it's on the big screen, it'd be giant size. But uh, that's another option for you. So thanks for uh, following and liking around the Ozarks, and thanks for watching the podcast or listening. We appreciate you so much. All right, and one more kicker story for you. Uh, it is Christmas in July for any Amazon Prime member, um, if you want to call it that, because if you are a Prime member, today is the day that you will have 48 hours of good deals to be had, uh, many of them on name brand and popular brand items. Okay. I've never had a good experience on Prime Day, personally. I've never there's shopped just, on Prime Day. There's nothing that I... I mean, I don't know. I look, but it's all, it's all stuff that I don't want or need. So, you know, obviously you don't do anything with it, but uh, I've never had good luck looking for the things that I do want or need and finding them on Prime Day, personally. Right. But I know a lot know. of people, a lot of people get a lot of boxes showing up after Prime Day. So, yep. Good We've discussed you. this. Not a, not an, not an Amazon shopper. So, yep. Okay. Well, have a good Tuesday, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning. See you. It's time for Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. Here's your host, Abby Dyer. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to your Tuesday, July 11th. Thanks for coming back today for the second episode of Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. We have another pretty nice day in store for you, summer-like with high temperatures near 90 degrees, inching upward a little bit from yesterday, but overall, nice summer-like conditions, and I have a staying dry for the most part today as well. So that's kind of a, a nice treat in this forecast. As you'll see, I have many chances for rain in the coming days. The humidity is going to build though, and that process starts today. The heat's up a little bit, the humidity's up a little bit. We had that south breeze yesterday. Once again today, I have a south wind in the forecast, which will result in our high temperatures making it to the low 90s in most spots. And the heat index, not too bad, not to the triple digits today, but that's what's coming as we look at later into the seven-day forecast, both Wednesday and Thursday. High temperatures today, as I mentioned, I think low 90s in most communities. However, you might be just a touch cooler than that down in the Boston Mountains. I have upper 80s for folks in northern Arkansas, up in central Missouri, places north of I-44. May get a bit warmer, mid 90s there. And the real reason is the drought conditions. The grass is brown and it's going to result in some warmer temperatures for the northern counties going about 91 for that high temperature forecast in Springfield today. I have heat index values on Wednesday and Thursday. The real headline there is that this heat is dangerous. We are talking about heat index values 100 to 110 degrees. So again, a reminder for you, a safety reminder, limit your outdoor time, the hours 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Those are always the hottest hours of the day. And it's also that time period when the UV index is considered extreme. So if you can plan your schedule for Wednesday and Thursday to be outdoors in the morning, take advantage of the evening hours, you'll avoid the most intense heat and the worst heat index as well as UV index if you kind of schedule around that 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. time frame because, oh man. 100 to 110 is dangerous heat, and uh, it's going to be pretty brutal for us, not only Wednesday, but also Thursday, because even actual high temperatures, got 98 for the high temperature on Wednesday. So it's going to be very toasty again in the Ozarks. Then the pattern kind of starts to shift a little bit. Yesterday, I was telling you about those two weather systems that are really battling it out for control. We're caught in the middle here in the Ozarks. And oftentimes this pattern, it's what we call Northwest flow. And it results in many opportunities for showers and thunderstorms. These little waves of energy kind of ride around that ridge of high pressure. The result for us is going to be some rain and storms, but tracking the exact timing of each of these thunderstorm complexes is going to be really difficult. And it's also going to make the temperature forecast for the second half of the week kind of difficult. I also think because we have such a charged atmosphere, such high humidity, such high heat, there will be the potential for some strong to severe weather a couple different times for the mid to late week time frame. So that's something that I wanted to tell you about early. So you can kind of keep that in the back of your mind mind as we get closer to the end of the week. So unsettled weather that's in the forecast Wednesday night through Friday. We're talking multiple rounds of storms here. I don't want to give you the impression that every single day is a washout because it's not. In fact, not everyone even sees the rain each and every day. We will just have these complex of showers and thunderstorms in the area each day, and that's going to allow 
for a big variation in temperature. And it's also going to mean that some of you get a whole lot of rain. We're talking maybe a couple inches of rain with the heavy downpours that are possible and the neighbor doesn't get anything. It's the nature of these summertime thunderstorms, but we'll track them out for you the best we can. I have conditions that are going to be unsettled Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. So this is just a, you know, I've been looking at all the model data it's coming in and every single new set of data it has the timing that's a little bit different. The idea here is that we're going to have multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms, rain possible through this entire time frame. And at least the way things are looking now, I think a lot of these showers and thunderstorms arrive in the evening and the overnight hours. And then a lot of the afternoon hours are actually dry, hot, and humid. So you'll see that I don't have the temperature forecast affected too much for the end of the seven day forecast. We bump numbers down a little bit, but for the most part, I think we're going to keep that hot and humid pattern. It's something to look for in the extended forecast. If I think showers and thunderstorms arrive during the daylight hours and they make it to the Springfield area, I'll have to knock some of those numbers down that you see on the forecast there for Friday, for example, 92. Well, if it rains in the middle of the day, that high temperature forecast will be affected. So that's what to look forward to this work week today, 91 in the forecast. I think we're mainly dry today. I've been watching a little bit of rain activity on the radar out West as this complex in Kansas kind of decays and falls apart. Can't rule out some showers early this morning. That's why we have some cloud cover out already today. I also can't rule out a little afternoon thunderstorm, but really I think it's going to be, you know, mainly dry in the forecast on Tuesday and the better chances for rain and storms really hold out until we get to Wednesday evening and Wednesday night. And then we have multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms for Thursday, Friday, even into the weekend. I have opportunities for rain and thunderstorms. All right, here's the wake up weather brain twister question for the day. I saw some of you taking a stab at this one over in the Facebook comments. And I wanted to show you yesterday's question again, ombrophobia, the extreme fear of what? Ombrophobia, fear of the options were A, rain, B, thunder, C, wind, or D, lightning. And if you were one of the many that guessed A, rain, you are correct. Now, I have never actually met anyone with ombrophobia. I've met a lot of folks that are scared of thunderstorms though. You know, the thunder, the lightning, that's really common, but the ombrophobia I haven't heard of. It's an anxiety disorder. I looked this up because I wanted to see how common it was and I couldn't find a percentage, but about 10% of Americans apparently have a fear of severe weather. The rain specifically is obviously probably a little bit less than that, but it can be a fear of the torrential downpours but also just a fear of drizzle, of getting wet completely. And oftentimes the fears that are associated there, people may worry that there could be acid rain or germs in the rainwater. Um, that's oftentimes kind of the, the real crux of the issue with the rain. So uh, ombrophobes may go to great lengths to avoid rain. They could decide where to live based on different weather patterns. They try and go somewhere where it just doesn't rain on them. Um, so now you know, ombrophobia, the fear of rain. I will leave you with the quiz question for tomorrow. You can take a stab at it over on the Facebook page again if you want to submit your guess around how much does a single cloud weigh? Now, to give you more specifics here, I'm talking like a, a normal, a common cumulus cloud. We have some out today, so go look up in the sky. Um, how much do you think one of those common cumulus clouds weighs, an average cumulus cloud? Do you think it's zero pounds, 100 pounds, 1,000 pounds, or 1 million pounds? I will have the answer to this one for you early tomorrow morning, but if you want to take a guess, no Googling. I forgot to say that yesterday too. That takes all the fun out of it. Uh, but let me know, what are your calculations? How much do you think a single cloud weighs? I'll have the answer for you early tomorrow morning and for up to the minute weather information all day long. We've got you covered over at aroundtheozarks.com. So head over there throughout the day and I will catch you early tomorrow morning.